All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fearless Ones podcast, where we build fearless people who build fearless communities, builds a fearless generation. Matt Ham and Kevin Adams on this glorious Friday. Kevo. Hey, hey, happy Friday. Beautiful yeah. day. Amen, brother. Amen. It is uh, good to be back on, um, you know, here on the broadcast. Uh, we really appreciate anybody who's tuning in here. Um, last week, man, you know, the, the show was titled, Are You a Yes Man for God? And um, man, we got some of the, the biggest audience, if you will, that we've had in a while. A lot of folks tuning in, um, especially, right. especially on YouTube. And um, that's always good, man, when folks are listening. So we really appreciate everybody yeah. tuning in. It's kind of our weekly teaching broadcast to really navigate through some ideas of, um, you know, what God's doing in the world and encouraging you to get to be a part of that. Um, and uh, we appreciate you guys joining, man. So, Kevo, what we got going on the slate today? Well, um, you know, we, we try to have themes and, and stick with an idea for a little while. And, uh, uh, and you know, we circle back and talk about different things. And then life, uh, culture, all of that, we have to uh, apply the biblical teachings um, in, in a way that uh, are meaningful. And I think that's the what we got going that's... Uh, always helpful. So a lot of the same things we revisit, but they apply a little differently because of just the way the world is right now or where mm. people are individually. So, uh, so some of this stuff is, is not new, but uh, it's fresh because it's, it's, it's almost, uh, it has a, a more urgency to it. So I think, you know, kind of tapping back in for the last few weeks, you know, we've talked about the idea of making disciples. Um, ultimately, God calls us to go, right? Go. The word go is very important. So, but before you can go, you have to learn how to listen and follow. And so you go all the way back four or five, six, seven shows, and you got, you know, learn how to sit still and listen. It's not about staying still forever, but it's about learning how to make that spiritual what I would call a spiritual chiropractic adjustment, where you you learn how to listen to God in the implanted word connected with the written word. And when you get that, then it's time to stand up and start to move forward. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the trajectory of where this this ends. And we'll probably change it up here uh, next time or in a couple of weeks. But so today I just, uh, you know, last week we talked about being a yes man. Like, are you listening? Are you embracing whatever he tells you and, and getting on with it? So today I, I think the other maybe part two of that is uh, just the idea that uh, maybe God's waiting on you. And a lot of that is, you know, these are things that, that I feel like he's been saying to me, um, hmm. not just for me, but, but to teach people and help people encourage them along the way. And I think a lot of people get stuck because they're waiting on God and the Bible tells us to wait, but that's why I laid all that out earlier. We, we should wait, but once we know, Jesus says, go, right? Mm -hmm. Go and make disciples. Mm -hmm. That's our job. All right. Yeah. So well, that's the title. So, you know, as, as you mentioned earlier, revisiting ideas and revisiting concepts, you know, um, mm -hmm. I think a lot of time we've become so consumer driven in our faith that we're just looking for the next little nugget. And we failed to actually apply what we learned last time or to revisit a concept. And, as yeah. you said that, you know, I just was reminded of the passage of scripture that says the word of God is living and active, right? Amen. Um, and right. it's sharper than any double-edged sword. And so when you look at the word of God as in the written word of God, which is the, you know, written word, as you just That's mentioned, right. you also have yeah. the, the implanted word of God, That's right. right? which is mm -hmm. the spirit of God in you that is active and moving. Yes. But then also, too, you've got Jesus as the word who was mm -hmm. active and he's in us active. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have to get to this place to get beyond milky Christianity where, you know, it's noble to quote a Bible verse and know the scripture, but we're, we're somehow sitting around, you know, and it's back. You said before waiting on rapture. Like I think most Christians haven't actually right. really studied the concept of what that means. 
And mm -hmm. it's interesting because like you said on previous episodes, that the command in the parable of the minus is occupy until I come to get mm -hmm. busy with the work that I've put you to do. So I'm just throwing in kind of like a bunch yeah. of different, you know, nuggets here Good. to really get people to stoke your fire and, and really say, man, we have biblical precedent and command um, that begins with rest, that begins with stillness and listening, but then it empowers us to action for his kingdom. Yeah. <clears throat> well, th those are all good thoughts and encouraging. I mean, one of the things we do is encourage people. And I think that's probably our favorite thing. Um, the, but challenging people is, is important. And, and you know, I, I don't know that a true friend is a true friend. Mm. I, I, I don't know that you can be a true friend to somebody. And that means, you know, kind of blood bought brother in Christ kind of friend. If you're not willing to challenge people and uh, because it doesn't do any good to placate or, or just to appease and, uh, you know, <laughs> appeases. It appease. ain't appeases. <laughs> it's appeases Jesus. Christ. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's that's where that's where a lot of people are. And, uh, you know, that's why it's gotten us where we are. And you can see the world around us. It, it's a it's an absolute disaster. But underneath it, uh, just like the darkest before the dawn, the sun's about to rise. And and, uh, you know, but we are the revival. It's not we're not waiting on, you know, some magical thing to happen or some, you know, down at the whatever church. It's, it's not happening. Um, you know, I'm not saying there aren't neat things and miracles. I'm just saying we got to quit thinking like that. Mm -hmm. And even if you go back and look at, uh, I used to be a loosely connected with uh, uh, Barna, uh, the statistical guy, Christian guy, um, just had, you know, some communication. And uh, but I was a, a studied what he was doing, you know, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 years ago. And I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by that because what what he was saying and I don't have the statistics in front of me, I'm just going by memory here, but. But just over the next however many years, um, people more and more will become unchurched. And, you know, the, the point was, I don't even know if that's the goal anymore, it, because we have to become the church. Now, I'm not saying that's what he was saying. He's just a numbers guy, a statistics guy. But but uh, just through Twitter and whatnot, um, <clears throat> I, back then, it was better back then. It wasn't communist, <laughs> but maybe it always has been. But anyway, what I'm saying is this thing is moving. And if you are just focused on sitting in a pew on Sunday, what you're going to start as you grow, you're going to start seeing that, 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 that there's a weak uh, pew. There's a weak kind of pulpit um, experience and it's not going to satisfy you. So you have got to get to know God. It doesn't mean you can't get in congregation and worship and all that's fine. It means that's a spoke. It is not the hub. And you've got to quit thinking that way. So anyway, it's happening. The sooner we, we get on with it, the better. Now, that's where I'm always coming from. And, you know, some people don't understand and get mad at I don't care. But back to the point you were making and, and we're making together. Your relationship with God is is the most important thing there is ever for, for forever more and right now. So what you do with that is the most important thing in your life. Everything built on top of that is a house built on the rock. And everything that's not is a house built on, you know, I'd say jello probably, but maybe the <laughs> not Bible cards. Would call it <laughs> it's jello. Sand. It's actually probably more like pudding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh it's not good. And that's where people get off. So you have to learn to listen to the spirit of God in you. And you have to learn how to you have to know what's in the word. You got to study it doesn't mean you got to study it the way everybody else does. It means you have to take it in and get it in your heart. You have to go there and imagine it and experience it. And, you know, what? one of the biggest things I see, Matt, is is people so are so rote minded that they look at the Bible and they think of it like, you know, mom's telling me to do a chore you know, and, and it's just always that way because, oh, I need to, I should, I, well, I wish I had, I, I need a better Bible. I need to, instead, we've got to look at it like we've got a hunger for it, hunger and thirst for righteousness. Mm. So 
you know, I was telling somebody, uh, I think it was yesterday, but when if, if you go to the, let, like, let's pick a good Mexican place like K38 or something. When you're starving, when you're really hungry and you go in the lobby and they say you got to wait 15 minutes and you just know, man, there's some, some good, whew, some really good carne asada tacos or fajitas and man there's a good ice cold tropical lightning but you gotta wait think about the first taste and how good it is that's how we need to treat scripture and the way to do that is you got to get interested in the story you got to get interested in the characters so don't we've got to get to approaching the bible in a way where we hunger for it and what happens is you cross that threshold and you start to get addicted to it Mm. and when you have that that's where the spirit comes to life and is illuminated and it's like two diodes i don't know if it's tesla or i'm not in that world but you got these two metal balls on the ends and electricity passes from one to the other and it creates an arc that's what's going on from our spirit man in the outside word the outside word keeps us focused on the inside and it connects with it and it keeps it from being contradictory and you, you can weigh it out against each other. It, it's not all that complicated, mm. but you can kind of navigate through. And that, that's what I don't think people understand. Like read the Bible, not because it's a chore, study it because it'll change your life, but it's not because it's just ink on paper. It's because it's, it's guarding your heart from the outside in while you learn to live from the inside out. Yeah. So. It, you know, it's it, it, again, going back to where we began, you know, you and I with the birth of, you know, you print so forth mm -hmm. so many years yeah. ago. And the first right. thing that was written was learning to feel the word. And, right. and really that is such a foundational piece for us as far as teaching yeah. goes, is that people have to re approach the Bible from right. a different perspective. And until people right. are willing to re approach the Bible and their entirety of their faith from a fresh perspective, it's going to remain rote, religious, duty, you know, habit, um, powerless kind of jello pudding. Jello pudding. I keep hearing jello pudding. It's probably not appropriate with Bill Cosby anymore, but it's still funny. It just so it's just this idea of it's like you've got to get back, you've mm -hmm. got to go back and reapproach it. And so right. um, you know, the the thing that I'm that I'm hearing, you know. A lot of people right now are looking at what's going on in the economy, and it's like, oh, news just came out. It's the second quarter, and da -da 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 -da. we are officially in recession, and we're going to label it. And we're going to talk about the economy, and and then we're going to go, well, who's the leadership? We got to get new leadership in Washington, and you know, we got to get new leaders in the pulpit. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like they're waiting on the economy to turn around, for a pastor to get unwoke for you know new leadership to come into washington and right. you know I, what we're saying is is that no that's not what god is doing in this season mm -hmm. it, it's not waiting on people or leaders things to change he's actually waiting on people to become the change to become like you said that's the right so, yeah. so talk about this thing, because there's a lot of people right now. One of my least favorite things is mm -hmm. when somebody goes on Facebook and says, looking for a good Bible based preaching church, you know, with a pastor nope. that doesn't stand on the, you know, this, this, this and this. Nope. And everybody goes, here's mine. Here's mine. Here's mine. Here's nope. mine. It's I, over. So nope. talk, talk about that, though, Kevin, because that's where people are. They're looking for a different colored, you know, the mean thing. So yeah. talk to that. Right. Thing. Well, I think the, the biggest, <laughs> you've known me for a long time now. I mean, a pretty good long season. And uh, I, this never changes. And uh, it, But it takes time to see the fruit. It takes time. You know, you say some stark things, some, some difficult things, and people don't like it. But over time, they gradually start to see, oh, my gosh, you know, this is right. This is coming from the good Lord. Um there's no arrogance. It's just, it's just the truth. All right. So if you, gosh, there's so much here, but, but to keep it simple, um, if you go back and look at what the church is, just go back and look at it, look at the reformation period, fundamental, crazy change was happening. 
go back to St. Augustine's period, you know, what was it like around the 300s and keep going back. All you have to do is just fly high enough and look at it. The church has always been about people. It's always been about being vessels. You know, it's just like when Jesus said, tear down this temple uh, and, and I'll rebuild it in three days. And they didn't understand he was talking about himself, but he's our leader. He's our king. He's the head of the body. So we emulate him. That means we are vessels. That means we are the temple. It has nothing to do with some big building where they have huge overhead and people just continue out of whatever to pour into that. It's not helping. Now, I'm saying that having gone through, uh, you know, elder training and all that. I've been through all that, you know. I, I, so I'm not saying it like some outsider. I've been, I've been in that my whole life, that whole world. So I'm coming at it from a tender place, a loving place, but I'm being honest about it. So this is changing. Now, now how do we know that it's not working? All you got to do is look at the world. So what, ha what has happened is that every so often, you know, God uses the, this and the wheels kind of fall off. But what doesn't change are people, people getting together, people worshiping God. But it always has to go back and reset or regroup, and recalibrate that. So you got to look at the bones of this thing. The bones are the word of God, the spirit of God, the truth that Jesus is God and us. We're here. We're his favorite thing. He gave everything for us. So when you add that up, you don't need, you know, better marketing. You don't need more coffee shops. You don't need to try to grow it so you can write a book and sell it to a bunch of people. You know, it's marketing. So so the world has gone into market better, market better. Let's grow it. Let's turn it into this. Let's build a platform. And, you know, we don't teach that. Everybody, you know, you can use social media, but we build people, not platforms. And I believe in 10 years, what we will have done will have more impact than any kind of building anywhere. So it, it, it I guess what I'm saying is, guys, look, all you got to do is look at if you look at the way things are right now, now it has accelerated like crazy in the last two years, and that's good. We needed to see how bad it was. But from the year of Jubilee on, 2016 on, it has just become completely unraveled. But it's the house with termites. It doesn't mean it was always like that, right? So, all right, and I know, I know this is a lot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sum it up. But all you have to do is look at the divorce rate. If you think that Sunday church is working for you, then keep doing it. That's fine, you know. But if you if you want a deep relationship with God, you've got to get up and be a vessel for Him and go be the church to other people. You got to be like Jesus. And the only way to to really hold on to this, it's not throwing out congregation. It's just saying if you put all your hope in that, that you're going to hear something from some woke or non woke pastor. Who cares? It's it's not up to these people. They are not the authority. They're not. It's, it's we the people. It's us, all right? But the divorce rate is disastrous. The, the rate of addiction, prescription drugs is disastrous. Uh, the economy, everything, everything. Yay, it's all falling apart. Well, the good news is we get to start over. So how are we going to do it differently is where I live. And where I want to go personally, but but I, that's where we, you know, you and me as a as a, uh, uh, leaders of uh, a nonprofit, and, and, and so it isn't working, and so it, you can't convince me that it's working. But you're welcome to try. So the the bottom line here is, has this thing been working? And if it has, then keep going with it. But I think the world is in the condition it's in right now because we have not been the church. We have gone to church. And that's the difference. So from from a from a beginning standpoint, you know, it, it's it's like the, the moment of awakening. Right. You know, we, we had a show for what, five years, six years, you know, called right. Wake Up Our Faith. And you, right. know, you, you wrote it in your book, you know, and experienced that 10 years ago, 12 years ago now. Um, right. so, you know, you've been talking about waking up, um, for a long time, uh, wake up. My faith was your Twitter handle, which, you know, had, um, six yeah. figure plus followers. I mean, so I'm just creating context for somebody who's sure. jumping into this a blog, new... everything. Yeah. yeah. 
you know, it's like it's like I think people forget <laughs> sometimes they it's do. like here, here these dudes are on a show. It's like, no, we've actually walked that path. You know, people come to us all the time. It's like, oh, dude, man, you got to get a you got to get a landing page and you got to get a team and all this kind of stuff for your products. And I'm like, dude, right. we, we've lived that. We've, you know, we've, right. been, we've written books. We've been, you know, in the center of that whole universe. And so we're, we're doing it differently. But anyway, all of that being said, the moment of awakening for somebody is often nauseating and dizzying, right? When you come to the realization that the way I've done it or the way I've been taught, it's not that it is bad and evil. It's just mixed. It's like, it's, right. it's, it's salt that's lost its saltiness. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, the only way salt loses its saltiness is if other elements get into the salt that, you know, it ceases to be salty. And so when you look at the institution and the way we've been raised and what we've been indoctrinated into and all this kind of stuff, it's like that moment of awakening from the matrix and being so nauseated that you vomit. You know, so for, for somebody who's in that place, Kevin, who's who's feeling, you know, the discontent with the way things are, you know, but they're stuck in this thing of waiting on something. You know, what, what do you think pushes them past the point of, you know, overwhelm? and easier to retreat into, you know, kind of the way it's been or whatever. What would you say to that specific person? Well, I think that um, you've got to get to know what's in scripture. You know, I, I, I can't, I can't stress this enough. It's not reading Jesus calling on the way from your shower to your coffee and to get in the car. It's not helping it may encourage you and I'm not against it. You know, I know the, the lady used to know the lady, um, you know, I was in that whole world and it, it's, it's not helping. What is helping is getting back to what's right. You know, what is right? The word of God is from him. It's, it's inerrant. If you don't believe that that's your choice. I choose to believe that with everything, every fiber in me. People that don't, uh, you know, I don't know what to tell you, and I don't care. I don't care because my job is to go and do whatever he leads me to do. So I'm just saying it. I'm, I'm just the messenger or one of them. But you've got to get in the word, and you got to take it into your heart. you gotta, you got to understand it. So there's ways to do that. You know, and I definitely try to help people understand that, that are not just the old way of, you know, sit down and dust it off and read it. You know, it, it's it you have to get involved with it. Now, that doesn't mean you need to do it every day at a certain time or whatever. Everybody's different. All I'm saying is you got to take it in. You got to take it in. You know, you got you will feed your baby. You know, if you got a baby, you know, I'm in the grandchildren era, but. How important is it for you to feed your, your newborn or your kid? And if you don't consider spiritually that you're not feeding yourself, then, uh, you know, you're going to starve and it shows. So what most people want to do, human nature worships intellect. It worships the mind of man and it gets off track. You know, it's two parallel lines, God's will and our faith. Our faith gets one tick, one tick, one tick off. And pretty soon it's going in the wrong direction. So, you know, we've got, I can give you four quick verses and these are pillars. And I teach these all the time. And we've been talking about it on our show for, you know, probably a year, but maybe not a year, but, but these are really good. Psalm 139, uh, 13 through 16. It, you know, this is tells God's intent. Now, if, if he made you, it says, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you. I'm fearful and wonderful. I made your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame is not hidden from you. It goes on and your eyes saw my unformed body. You ordained me. It, it, God's telling you he made you and he put you here now, not 200 years ago, not 200 years from now, but right now. Now, if you don't stop in your day, and really make that an important thing to let it sink in your heart, then you're going to get on with what you're seeing and, and, and lose sight of that. The, the next one is Ephesians 2.10. Um, this tells you why. 
why are you here? You, why are you here? This is very simple. Now, it gets really, really uh, detailed gradually when you have that relationship with him. But, but even at a corporate level, it says, for we are God's handiwork created in, in Jesus to do good works. I got to move my little um, thing over here. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. That's Ephesians 2.10. So it goes back to Psalm 139. In advance, he created us for his good works. That's what we're here to do. We're not here to go sit in a pew. We're here to get on with being a vessel. Now, you need to learn. You need to be edified. You need to be equipped. All that's good. Teaching is good, wherever it happens. But um, <clears throat> then you come to the next table leg, I would call it. And uh, it's uh, Romans eleven twenty nine. It says, "For the, for God's gifts and His call are irrevocable." So I remember I was telling somebody the other day. I said, "You know, or way before I started getting into marketing and technology and all that, I was selling paper and ink and printing. Even before that, selling dot matrix printer paper. You know that old stuff." <laughs> I sold it. I sold the crap out of it. Um, but everything I, I, I noticed that this was from the early nineties up for the, you know, probably the first four or five years of the nineties. And uh, what I noticed was everything I sold started becoming obsolete. Right. <laughs> I kept thinking, God, you know what? I need to sell air or food or something because <laughs> oh, don't need it. Every I'm selling, you know, I sold printing and, and then it, I, all of a sudden people didn't need it like they did. So I said, show me, give me something that, that I can make a living on that doesn't go away. And, you know, the biggest thing he reminded me of is, is these verses and especially that one. His, what he gives us, his gift, it's irrevocable. So it doesn't matter. It, it, Matt, you have gifts. Kevin has gifts. Those things are part of the calling that every listen, really listen to me on this. And I'm not saying you, Matt, you know this, but but anybody, every heavenly calling has an earthly preparation season. Every one of them. You can't you don't give a baby a car. You've got to prepare. And so these scriptures and I'll get through them here real quickly. But God says his calling and the gifts to carry it out are irrevocable. That doesn't, that means that no matter what, you know, we got these corrupt people who basically overthrew our government and have tried through medical fraud and all this garbage, you know, wars and rumors. Of, it's all green. New, it's bull crap. All of it. Sunshine and meat are good for you. Right. You know me, but so God's saying that, what he has done cannot be undone. We can't be sidetracked. He can't be sidetracked by man. That's why when people try to go, well, red letters are really the best words in the Bible. No, they're not. They're all God's word. And it, man can't mess that up. God didn't have any trouble saying what he meant to say. If he created the world and, and put it into existence, how hard is it for him to say what he, he meant? So despite our failures, all right, so coming back here, God's calling and the gifts he gave you are irrevocable. So it doesn't matter about the economy, none of that. What matters is what are you going to do with what you have in you despite that? So it's like going to the game field and, and saying, all right, there's potholes in the field and nobody's in the stands and, man, I'm just blah, blah, blah. Or are you going to run the crap out of the ball? Are you going to, are you going to throw it? Are you going to catch it? You know, are you going to play the game? That's the big question here. God's saying what I gave you, nobody can take it away from you. So if you use that, it is a great business plan. People don't know that. They don't take the time to listen to this kind of stuff. They want to go listen to freaking Joe Rogan or whatever instead of this. So they miss and they get old and they miss the mark and they complain and they live in regret. The last one is Proverbs 18, 16. And again, you know, this is this is valuable stuff here. You know, we're just giving it away, but it's it's God's thing. So so we're going to do it. But a man's gift 
Uh, man is just a masculine term. It means mankind. It means people. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men, great people. Depending on the version you read, it says kings or influence, uh, influential people. And I have seen that. I have not tried to get in front of anybody. But God's put me in front of some pretty incredible people. Why? Because I speak straight truth to them. And so, so you take those four verses and you start to recognize God put you here on purpose. He saved you. He put you here right now. It's very, very specific. Okay, so that's corporate. You got to guard your heart. Stay in the word. It helps you do that. It, it, you help, it helps you live by faith, walk by faith and not by sight. But it also opens your spirit up and it connects. And then God starts talking to you specifically about you. It doesn't say in the Bible, hey, Matt, go be a baseball player or a speaker. So you got to learn to listen to him. But it has to be grounded in the written word. And it all works beautifully together. And when you follow that, when you start to get up and go, knowing you're going to make disciples, but you're going to do it in the way that he gives you, it's beautiful. It can't fail. It takes a while sometimes. And people throw rocks. So what? You know? So so anyway, that's a lot. I know I was going through a lot, but, you know, it, it sometimes God's just waiting on us to get up and get on with this small steps in the right direction though. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be, you know, just throw away everything. And, you know, it, 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 but, but he also says, don't store up in barns. You know, a lot of people are doing that. And what's the point of that? You know? So anyway. So I have, um, and that's all fantastic stuff. My, my challenge to our listeners is to go back and really meditate on those four passages of scripture and really think about the uniqueness with which you were created, the gifts which you were given, and then say, are, are you leveraging everything in your life you yeah. know, for, for the application of those gifts for his kingdom? And when the, and, and have you been willing to be prepared through pain, through trauma, through, you know, um, overcoming yeah. of obstacles? And when you've done those things, then you get ready for the, the idea of the promotion or exaltation that comes from a, a lifestyle of humbling yourself before God, fearing the Lord. It's the beginning mm -hmm. of wisdom. And so just to challenge everybody with that. Right. Um, Kev, two, two things. First is. Um, when you said something earlier about people needing to reapproach the word and really understand it for what it is and hide it in their heart and begin to digest it as the adventure, you know, et cetera. Yeah. Um, it reminded me of a couple of years ago, I was on a walk one early morning and it was around this time of year. And all of a sudden I just started noticing on the sidewalk, man, there were all of these earthworms that were like halfway across the concrete and they yeah. were literally dying. They were, they were becoming that shriveled up earthworm that you see on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And the Lord just spoke and he just said, this is many of my people. They are mm -hmm. suffering from spiritual dehydration. And, you know, again, the water, yeah. right. We're made of water. He, he talks right. about the water being the spirit and like an earthworm that like leaves the, the dirt, you know what I mean? If it gets on concrete, it can't be nourished. It can't be hydrated and it's getting burnt up, you know, by the sun because it's out of its element. And the reality is, is that we as believers belong rooted and planted and grounded in his word. And when we remove that from our lives, we become spiritually dehydrated and therefore dried up, shriveled up, you know, earthworms, if you will. So yeah, that's right. just an image that I want people to really sit on and ask yourself, are you spiritually dehydrated? Um, and have you been, you know, being filled yeah. with the word? So anyway, I did not know if you want right. to add anything on that. That was yeah. the first thought that I had. Yeah, no, it's good. Living water, you know, you never thirst. Same thing. So that's good. It's I think this is part of it that we have to help. Uh, I use metaphor all the time and images and allegory. It, it's I mean, that's what Jesus did. You know, we, we it, it's it's um, it's parabolic. It your, your middle water. initial your middle initial is M, but it stands for <laughs> metaphor. Kevin metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just Sorry. saying, and I appreciate those things, and and because Amen. we have to use the things that we can see. This is what Jesus did. This is what you know. Parabolic teaching is it's 
it's a parable. It's an arc, but it's it's we don't see the bottom. We see the top. We see around us. We use things we can visually see in our lives to unearth the things we cannot see. So this is how Jesus taught. And he did it. And, you know, you have to have ears to hear and eyes to see. You have to have an open heart. The heart is a transition point between the spirit and the physical. Um, so you take things in physically. You have to assimilate. And you have to live. Um, but, but anyway, not to get off track, but you have to live from the inside out. You have to, it's like saying, uh, hey, Matt, you are a surgical glove. God is the hand. He wants to do some brain surgery while you're here. And, uh, you know, he's the strength. He's the, the, the knowledge. He's the power behind it all. But you get to participate in it, and he wants you to, and it's an important part of it. And that's what it means for each of us. Now, how that looks um, is important um, to discern and gradually grow into. Like I said, every every heavenly calling has an earthly preparation. She's a, so that goes back to embracing mysteries, stepping in, knowing that the game field you're meant for. You know, sometimes, it, uh, you know, it, just continuing on with metaphors and ideas, but sometimes it really hurts my heart when I'm, I'm out in the water and I just was out there this morning that, you know, there's a crane and they, they keep knocking down these 1940 something houses out here and they keep building these monstrosities. And I just think, you know, Lord, I sure would like to have a home, you know, of my own. I do live at the beach and I'm grateful for it, but I, I want to own a home at some point. And, and so, but I, I'm like, well, you know, why can't I have one of those? And, you know, these, rich people just keep coming in and, and building these things. And they don't, they're, they're not there, you know, they're like empty souls sitting on the beach. And it's, it's heartbreaking to me. Now, I, I appreciate the, the idea behind it. I get it, you know, make some money, rent it out, all that kind of stuff. But my point is it, it's, you know, I don't, sometimes I just have to say, well, instead of bitching about that, I just got to go, you know what? Thank you for putting me in the water. Let me be useful today and let God deal with that. And uh, but you know what he always does? He always gives me what I'm asking for, something better. So we need to use metaphor. We need to we need to be able to complain. We need to be able to talk to God. But the point in all of that, that parabolic idea is that Jesus wants us to have deep relationship with God. So, you know, I was out surfing with Hunter this morning. I I had prayed. (laughs) I said, Lord, I want one good ride in front of this guy so he can know that I'm not a dork. And uh, I got a jam up ride right in front of him this morning. He's like, man, that was a wave of the day. But that's not silly. So mm-hmm. my point back to you is is the everything is God's, the earth and everything in it, earthworms, dehydrated worms. It's we need to live full on, full on. This is his place and we are his people, and this is our place. And we need to take over. We need to stop thinking about buildings and where you can get the next great lesson. And we need to realize that every one of us have incredible value. And when we start bringing what we have to the mix, none have need. That's the church. And that's where it's going, like it or not. I can see it. I'm just telling you what I see. If you don't agree, that's fine. It doesn't bother me. But that's where it's going. And, uh, you know, that works, but it also keeps us grounded in relationship, not just going somewhere and mailing it in and making the church idea our, our hub. Hmm. The, the, the other thing that's been on my kind of heart since we've been talking today, um, and here recently is, um, the great, error or I'm going to call it sin, I guess, um, of modern people is, and again, I guess this is always historical, but especially now is living by sight. And it's, you know, it says the eye is the lamp of the body, right? Jesus Mm -hmm. teaches that it says, so if the eye is bad, the whole body is bad. And we are a generation who has been so inundated with, um, things that we see and it's just constant information it's technology it's it's accessibility in an instant it's information overload it's news 
It's and now AI right. has gotten so dramatic that you can't tell what is really true and what you are just being deceived in seeing, you know? Right, right. It, it's it's technology and science is moving to a place where it's trying to create a fantasy world that is not true, although it looks true, right? And right. so the great error of of this generation, especially the Christian generation, is living by sight because biblical truth tells us we are not to live by sight. So if That's we right. are living by sight, we are in sin. We are in separation from what God called us. And so like, th th I'm just feeling like, how as a body, as an individual people, we have to repent for God. I've missed it. I've been living by sight. I've been living by my own understanding and like getting right with that thing. It's like the moment where the prodigal comes to himself. You know what I mean? And it's just like, that's my charge and challenge to folks. It's like you were created to live by what is unseen. And if you're operating in the scene, you're operating mm -hmm. in what was not made for you. And so just really challenging people to wrestle with that idea and apply it to what you're saying here about God waiting on you, you right. know, it's, it's, it was really, really profound. So I just wanted to, sh in my own mind, at least, I just wanted to share that. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, I think that people need to understand that God is good and they need to see his goodness. Um, but if you, it, it, the, the people that struggle the most it maybe it's blinders or you know just stuff behind their spiritual periphery and uh you know that's what god has to 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 tutor us and it takes time and if you're impatient you just think you know it's got to happen immediately instead of just getting on with what he is telling you to do then you miss you start missing the mark but the further away you get the more uh either uh distraught and depressed you become or arrogant you know and hmm. it's the arrogant that are, are are really the ones and and we see that how jesus dealt with people so i think that I, I would agree with that um but i also think that the most encouraging thing is is to you you have to live it you have to lead by by example um you know it's more of the brave heart go first than somebody you know some british monarch sitting back and saying archers you know shoot and he you know this guy's polished and he never gets dirty no it's the ones who get dirty and so i'm saying it from that place um but when you understand how good god truly is it, look i'm not saying i get it like he's beyond any kind of comprehension but you start to taste his goodness and see him come through it's there's nothing like it so so i would encourage people that you know if you have a a, a blind spot or you have a moment or, or or place where you've been arrogant yes repent but don't waller and fail you get yeah. up and start getting on with the goodness of god that's what jesus gave us not just a home in heaven that's included but he gave us family and that's that's where I think when people realize they belong and, and they're needed and they have value and let's come together and let's bring those gifts together. That's where you got, you know, uh, you know, somebody who's really gifted in one thing, helping somebody who isn't. And, 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 you know, and people have resources and, you know, we're not going to beg you for donations. I mean, that's ridiculous, but what better cause is there? building more storing up more you know I, I i harp on that but it's because i see it i see the the failure of people are all trying to, to to do their own thing and they can people need to have autonomy over their gifts and what they have but but they're not the reason god gave it to us is for him and what he wants to do here while we're here and so that's where it works beautifully together you have autonomy you get to think you get to be free, but you got to pour it out and be useful. That's the greatest thing there is, right? To give. So, so I would agree with the repentant heart. And uh, but, but I think the bigger thing, the bigger motivator to me is, look what you're missing. You're trading, you know, mm -hmm. uh, a, a hundred dollar bill, if you will, for a penny. Yeah. You know, a it's moment the of flesh. 
Yeah, it's the feet. You're trading the feast of the father for the pig slop, yeah, right? I mean, that's exactly. the prodigal, you know. Yeah. And and again, and, and I hear exactly what you're saying. You know, that word repentance has often been, you know, used as a way to kind of like induce shame and all of that kind of stuff, which is not what right. it's about. You know, it, right. it truly is about you know letting the father. Um, really going back to that place of realizing that he's good, just as the prodigal, when right. he came back to the father, he said, let me be a servant. And he said, foolish talk. And he, he might've smacked him a couple of times. He said, put some robe on the, you know, put a ring on the finger and sandals on the feet and a robe on this boy and kill the right. fatty cat. This is my son. And yes. so I think I just to, to, to double back with what you said there yeah. is when you're talking about repenting and, and, and whatnot, no, and believe and see through the metaphor that the father is waiting with the ring, the robe and the feast, you know what I mean? And, and that is, is um, an invitation yeah. to participate in something that is greater than just, you know, what seems to be the pleasure of the world, which is, you know, the, the kid, right. the kid went out there and indulged all the way to the pig slop, you know, and there's a lot of pig slop moments right now. I think that people are getting ready to have, right. And I just right. want just to reiterate, God's so good and, and he's calling his people back to this place of the feast. And um, but anyway, moving moving on, man, you know, we've got about 10 minutes, I guess, before we wrap up today's show. Um, you know, what kind of final thoughts did you did you have and where do we want to kind of um, direct people, some action steps some things that they can do to kind of apply what we talked about today? Well, um, I, I think. You know, before we uh, just to just I wanted to read yesterday's text because it, it I think it it's the, the the context of today's idea is God a lot of times God's just waiting on you you, you you're praying and begging him and come on and and he's saying well I'm, I'm just waiting on you it's like the father and the prodigal son he comes home and he says okay let's celebrate so remember God's goodness but but remember that moving forward if god's waiting on you and he probably is right now we're in that kind of season it, you know what are the obstacles we talked about that last week embracing them getting on with them going but but it's just just think about it it's just small steps in the right direction so you have to learn where you're going you know kind of an xy axis through your relationship, listening to God, that still small voice, staying in the word, it all works together. It sounds like a science project, but it's not. It's very organic and beautiful. Um, and you just know and you know where to go, what to do. And that's how, you know, I've lived this way for, gosh, 14, 15 years. And there's nothing like it. But trying to help people understand it who aren't there is extremely difficult. It takes mm -hmm. a lot of patience. But once they get a taste of it, 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 there's no going back. And I'm seeing that more and more and more because everything's accelerating. So, so I just wanted to read yesterday's text to kind of encourage people that it's not some leap. It's not a leap. It's not some big old, you know, I'm going to quit my job or do that. It's small steps in the right direction. All right. So I'll read this. This is from yesterday. This is what we send out to our community who, you know, I think, uh, through coffee or, or, you know, the, the small monthly donation, but they get this. All right. So it says faith isn't a leap. It's the act of crossing lines one footstep at a time. Uh, step one, face your fear as, it, as you count the cost of what you may lose by moving forward. Now, this is where a lot of people stop. They count the cost and they think I might die or I might lose or fear, 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 fear. It's okay to count the cost and actually acknowledge what could happen. It's not okay to stay there. And that's the difference. Okay. So step one, that was step one, step two. And I call that, you know, like the right leg and then the left leg. All right. The left leg. And the next step is step two is face your desire as you count the cost of what you will assuredly lose by staying where you are. Only both steps will move your entire body forward. What steps of faith are you taking today? So you got two steps. When you're walking, you have to take one step, but you can't just stop there. You have to take the next one. So you first step is to count the cost of what you may lose by moving forward. The second step moves your whole body forward is counting the cost of what you will assuredly lose if you do not go. And we're called to go. 
Mm-hmm. So you can't sit still your whole life and, and, and be depressed and wait on God. You have to begin to take small steps. Now, you know, it's, it's not contradicting. There's a process here. But we're in a season right now where it's time for us to rise up and be who we are. And God's saying that big time, you know. Mm. So we need to be the church. That means who you are matters so much right now to the world. The world needs your gifts, the thing God put together and put you here to accomplish. But if you're just off in left field or right field and depressed or just trying to make more money or trying to figure it out, then you're walking by sight. Mm. Uh, doesn't mean you can't do those things. It means if they're not grounded and they're not led by God, it won't matter anyway. It's a waste of your time. You're storing it up and somebody else is going to have it and it won't affect change. So, you know, God wants you and your stuff comes with it, but it's just one step, two step, one step, two step, and it'll open up everything and you'll start seeing why you're, why you're here. This is how it works. You're not going to get it out of the Purpose Driven Life book or any. It, it, that's not. That's just people. It, that's encouraging, but it, it doesn't really help. What helps is getting to know God and staying in His Word and being around His people. That's what works. I um, had a really interesting um, experience this week. We were traveling, and I was with my parents, and uh, my dad took us back to where he was born. And it was a small town, South Carolina, and he was born on a farm. And, you know, it was just kind of weird thinking about, you know, my dad who's in his 60s now and, you know, yeah. being a little five-year-old running around on the farm or whatever. But uh-huh. we drove through this old downtown of the small town that he was born in. And, man, the, the entire place is just deserted. It looks like, you oh, know. Wow. I mean, it, it it truly looks like apocalyptic. I mean, it's like, you know, stores abandoned. There's not a lot of people. And it's just like, it was just wild. And it was just yeah. weird because there's this thing of like, you know, people want to go back to the way things were, you know, and they're stuck in that mindset there, you know, right. And it's like right. My dad had nostalgia in visiting his hometown, but sure as I sit here, he don't want to go back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. because God has moved on, you know what I mean? And and again, and not, the, not right. the I'm not getting into the literal things of why these small towns, you know, whatever. But I'm saying so many people want to go back, but they don't realize that, like, you know, that's not the thing. Like the thing that's is right. to move forward. And that's God right. is a God of restoration and he will restore things. Right. But it's uh-huh. not about basing it on what was. And, and so it, I just would invite right. somebody in their mind and heart to go back to you know, these things and see them as like old abandoned, you know, buildings and stuff. It's like God is moving over here. And so we need to to continue to move forward. And so I I just, uh, I like that. Yeah. Wanted to use that image, um, yeah. you know, to really invoke some thought for people who may be wanting to go back to the way it was. You know, it's not about rehab, and this isn't a, you know, a, a, a home and garden network, you know, thing of restoring the old house. It's, it's no, we're going to build something new. Um, like what you said last week, God burns yeah. the house down and gives you a bunch of wood and says, let's get with it. Yeah. Yeah. Y- you know, it, it's, uh, we don't need to drag the wealth of Egypt across the desert. Um, you can't go back. You don't go back to Egypt. It, God's doing some great things and you're part of it. And he put you here for that reason. And if you can't get a hold of that, then you, you, you're going to get stuck where you are. Um, but again, it's, it's the very first step is, is to get excited about the future. When you see the enemy telling you, what, look at what the enemy's been telling us. <laughs> you know, I mean, to me, he's a wet noodle. He's got nothing. We don't need to be afraid of him. We don't even need to engage him. But there is an enemy, and he's a worthy adversary. If you're living from your head up, you can't beat him. He's going to kick your butt. But when you're living from the spirit out, and your head is just the processor, and the fruit comes out your hands, it's unstoppable. That's where the gates of hell cannot you know it it, it can't prevail the enemy is nothing not it's not the Biltmore and the you know and the uh, motel eight i mean it's like you know a piece of dirt and everything so all i'm saying is it's it is good to, to think about the ghost town and 
nostalgia is great, but that's, you know, that's good to have a beer over. That's not good to go back and live there. Right. Uh, I don't want to have some car from way back then or <laughs> yes. crappy clothes. Anyway, the, the big idea is, right, let's, what are the takeaways today? God is waiting on you, probably. If you feel like you're getting nowhere, get up and take a baby step. That might be simply reminding yourself of these scriptures. Put them on your wall and study them. Get them in your heart. But get in the word. And one of the ways to do that is um, that I teach people is like just study a character. You know, I've, I've talked about Nehemiah and Stephen and different people. Just find somebody that you want to learn about and get in there and treat it that way. Don't treat it like a chore. Treat it that way. Learn. So that's that's moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Recognize. Get up every day and pray in a way where you know that God put you here because those verses show you that. You can't deny those verses and then sit around and do nothing. I mean, you, you can't. It didn't work. So if you agree with those words, then you have to get up and start moving forward. It doesn't. What it doesn't mean is you got to take some giant leap. It means you've got to take the steps in the right direction, baby steps. Learn something, move forward, help somebody. But it starts to dovetail into why you're here and what you bring that none would have need. Mm -hmm. And so, so that there's a lot to it. But to me, that's the point. Is probably there's a lot of people waiting on when's this going to change and, and it won't hmm. what will change is when you get up and start moving forward and making decisions that's where everything changes we are the revival we will have a better government you know look i if you ask me personally <laughs> dude trump will be back i'm all for it i can't wait military whatever but we're not we don't wear masks and never we don't do that stuff it's garbage it's crap. It's from the pit of hell. It doesn't mean some people are, you know, they're still toiling around in man's best. You know, there was an article the other day that was talking about how medication does not help depression. And, you know, all this stuff, you got to let go of it. God is good. What he made is good. So, so start just getting up every day and reminding yourself that you're here. He's good. Keep your chin up. The future's good. And stop complaining. We talked about this several shows ago. When you start doing it, I have to catch myself. So wait a minute. I'm not going to complain. I'm going to go help somebody. I'm going to give somebody me, a little bit of me. And in that, Jesus works, you know, a little bit of Matt, a little bit of Kevin, whatever, because we're vessels. Mm -hmm. It's not about us but it satisfies us and we, we start to learn our value. That's why we're here. We're not here to accumulate, although that's fine, but it, it's, 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 it doesn't help. If it doesn't go and help God's kingdom advance, then it is a waste and it's very selfish. And uh, I would not want to be the person that does not pour into God's kingdom, but that's up to them. So yeah. anyway, I know I get on a pedestal, but this is so important because God made you. He gave everything for you. And that means he made you priceless. You're here right now with breath in your lungs. We're just telling you to start going and look, you jump in, help us go. We'll help you. We'll help each other, you know, seriously. Yeah. So, but the other thing is we got, uh, we got hot sauce almost ready to go. We're finishing up our labels and packaging. And it's so good, man. Oh, so good. So yeah. anyway, that's a I'm, leap. But <laughs> I'm I'm pumped about it, man. Well, Kev, we got to wrap up here. And I appreciate everything you poured out today. Friends, thanks so much for, for listening. Do connect with us, fearlesstradingcompany.com. Um, shoot us a shout out on social media, message us, let us know. But let's get on with it. Like Kevin said, get up and go. Now's the time. Thanks, guys, for listening. We appreciate you. We'll see you next week.